Hello, everybody, and welcome back yet again to another drum playthrough review. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and stopping by. It's great to have you. For everyone who's brand new, hello and welcome. My name is Nick. I'm a multi instrumentalist, and also I mix and master music. And the reason why we like to do these videos is because it's fun. We get to learn from the greatest and the best by watching their videos. And ultimately, we get to take their techniques that they've learned and they've used over the years and use that so that way we can benefit ourselves as musicians. So today, we're going to be checking out a dude who is a absolute legend among the drumming community. He's played for a host and a multitude of bands, and sometimes he's been in like 15 different bands at a time. Dude's been known for being able to hold down multiple different projects and some of the bands that he's been with, just saying their names is insane because it's like, wow, he's been in that many bands. This man has been in Dark Angel, Testament, the legendary band Death. He's played drums for Death Clock. This man is known by the legendary name of Gene Hoagland. Gene Hoagland, also known as the Atomic Clock for how accurate he is, is known for his insane accuracy on the drums literally almost being complete a human metronome at this point for his insane speed in technical drumming and for revolutionizing death metal as a genre during his time. This man has helped inspire many different drummers, including myself, and he's one of the few legendary drummers in the world that many people can say have had a massive impact on their drumming. Chances are there's a metal album out there that you listen to right now that he's probably played on. He's been in so many different projects, it's absolutely insane. But all that to the side, we're going to be taking a look at a song that he did and wrote with Testament a little while back called Brotherhood of the Snake. This is a drumio play playthrough that we're watching. This is a drumio playthrough that we're watching, so this is going to be really high quality, really official looking stuff. I wanted to do a death song originally, but the quality was too low so i was like i can't exactly use that so we're gonna try and uh find something that's a little bit higher quality so one of these days eventually we will find a death playthrough and we'll go ahead and do that but as for right now we're gonna enjoy gene hogan playing this song brotherhood of the snake by testament and we'll just really break down his amazing technique that he's used it's definitely something that's crazy to see because he's accomplished a lot of things over the years and he's made a name for himself and he absolutely deserves it all right and without further ado ladies and gents let's get into the video Look at the size of his tongs. And also you'll notice too how low his hi-hat is. By comparison to his snare drum. Very good synth patient. He's using ankle weights, by the way, as you can tell from Gold's Gym. And he also uses wooden beaters on his drum kit. The same wooden beaters he's used, as he said, for the past like 40 years. It's so crazy, too, his technique, because he's built up. A, um, he's built up a left-handed lead technique, which is very interesting because most people are right-hand leads. But also he's ambidextrous, so he can switch between the two. It's a little known fact about him. Very beautifully played so far too. He's keeping a really good groove, really good power and loose the whole time. He's grooving and he's like perfectly on time. Very interesting little play that he's doing there as well. Especially for this style, this is thrash metal. Usually thrash metal is a little bit more straightforward, so him adding all this extra stuff in there is, is very good to see. And this came from his time in death as well. But yeah, ankle weights do. He's using ankle weights. If that's something that people really don't think of, and he's using a lot of crazy ankle motion, full leg motion, and that's all just to warm up his legs before he starts playing really fast stuff. 
This is something he's been doing for years. The double ride setup. If it wasn't for Gene Hoagland, I wouldn't have a double ride setup now, myself. Very good power that he's using as well. He's also using unique and interesting fills as far as his uh, note choice he's using. He's not using just straight up, oh, just eighth notes and sixteenth notes. He's using the eighth note triplets as well. See right there, he's using Swiss Army triplets. It's beautiful. What a Chad. What a Chad on the drums. So yeah, man, Gene Hoagland, the Atomic Clock. What an incredible drummer. I've got nothing bad to say about Gene. Gene has been doing drums for a very long time. He has been using drums as his instrument for, I think we're edging on to 40 years now or something like that. He's been doing it for a long time. And this video is several years old. The amount of bands and the amount of stuff that he's learned and with all the bands that he's been in over the years, he's absolutely crazy. Gene Hoagland uses a lot of different unconventional techniques in order to achieve the power that he's gotten. And a lot of people never really understood why he did it back in the day. Ultimately, you can see it's affected his drumming very positively. He's able to perform songs like this absolutely perfectly. His timing is insanely perfect and unique. He's not doing anything that's like, you know, crazy or bad with his drumming or anything like that. He's keeping it all very consistent, very nice, and he's using very interesting note choices as well for his fills. So let's take a look at his technique there. So he's using a lot of full leg motion and a lot of ankle motion for the faster parts, especially on the bass drums. But the full leg usually just to keep, you know, the slower parts nice and groovy and heavy as well. But you'll notice he had the ankle weight strapped on there as well. In this video, Gene Hoagland goes into that. He talks about how the ankle weights actually do help him because in the first couple of songs he'll wear the ankle weights to get his legs nice and warmed up and then when it's time to play a really fast double bass song or something like that he just takes the ankle weights off and he's able to just fly with that ankle technique this is a very common thing known as weight training and this is used a lot by mma fighters and boxers what they'll do is they'll hold like a two or three pound dumbbell and they'll just train and shadow box with that and eventually they'll work with their way up to the point where they're training with like five pound dumbbells just going you know and doing training and whatnot and what they'll do is they will take that weight training that they're using and then when they go and put on 16 ounce boxing gloves they're able to just move and move around real quick because they've been training with the weights so now that they've taken the weight away they can just move and have a lot more power and a lot more speed with it this is scientifically based research and this is also something that's very safe to do as long as you're practicing proper form so absolutely you can weight train especially when you're playing drums as well the other thing you'll that he's talked about in this video as well. He's also weight trained with his sticks as well. He'll take like a bundle of like three or four sticks that are taped together and he'll just grab them and just start, you know, doing stuff with his wrists or whatnot, just doing like wrist rolls and whatnot, just to help warm up his wrists and get everything all nice and ready and warmed up, get things nice and loose. And then when it comes time to actually play drums, he grabs the regular sticks and he's able to move a lot faster. He's feeling nice and warmed up. It's a real good routine before the show. His setup is also something very interesting too. He keeps his hi-hat very low and very close you know, in height, at least on a flat plane next to his uh, snare drum. But he also scoots it very far away. And this is for a couple reasons, one of which in the studio, you want to keep your hi-hat a little bit more spaced out from your snare drum because of bleed. I have my hi-hat very far away from my snare drum because you don't want the hi-hat sound to bleed into the drum mic for your snare drum having hi-hat bleed and into your snare drum mic it's it's really messy to fix it doesn't sound very clean and at the end of the day when i have to go in and eq a microphone for your snare drum and i just hear hi-hat bleed in it it's just going to sound like trash so it's really good to keep those spaced out especially for in the studio but there's also practical applications to it as well for one it causes a lot less stick clicks especially in the recording as well and also playing live which means less of a chance of messing up if you have a little bit more distance between the two so that's also just a plus as well his setup is very efficient it's based on getting the most power with the least amount of effort needed so with combination of the weight training the setup of his drum kit and also just keeping generally very loose 
with his technique, Gene Hoagland has built himself a very, very solid style that is unmistakable. So what are some things you can learn from Gene Hoagland that'll affect your drawing positively? Well, for one, try out some weight training if you're feeling like you're lacking a little bit. Make sure when you do these weight training exercises and whatnot, you're using proper form. You're not trying to just strain yourself to keep on going as fast as possible. Start out at a nice comfortable tempo with these weighted sticks or weighted, you know, ankle weights or whatnot when you're doing anything with like full leg motion or ankle motion or whatnot. Just start out at a nice comfortable tempo and slowly try and take it up from there. And when it gets to a point where it starts to feel like you're falling apart a little bit, back it up a little bit and just keep playing it until you can get it clean. And then take off the weights for a little bit and then try it. You'll notice you'll start being able to go faster very slowly. And this is beneficial. This is very good. But just continue to when you're doing weight training to make sure that you're using proper form during your exercises and whatnot, even if it's, you know, in the gym or behind on the drum kit. So that way you stay injury free and also you're able to gain the effects of weight training. Consider your drum setup. Maybe there are some things you may want to change that are going to cause you to make less mistakes and less accidents behind the kit. This is something that I'm sure a lot of drummers are going to not really want to do because usually once we find a setup that we're comfortable playing with, we want to stick with that setup. But just be, you know, be advised that you you may want to switch some things around a little bit simply because you never know you might end up finding a change that's even better than the one you have right now and you can always go for a better setup that's always great too stay loose stay consistent practice often and make sure that when you're practicing you're staying loose and you're not being too tense or anything like that because you don't want to cause injury to yourself excellent job gene hoagland what a phenomenal playthrough that was it was great i love watching gene hoagland play and with all that being said y'all that's going to be the end of this video so here's just a few things y'all can do to support me so for one you can like share comment subscribe and all that good stuff you can check out down below the playlist that i have with videos very similar to this and you can also check out the links i have for my band page and my spotify page down below thank you all for tuning in and stopping by it's great to have you hopefully i'll be able to see you guys in the next one and cheers, and have a good night.